Welcome back. Well, don't ask me to condemn terrorism. That's the message from Rana Elmir. She's the deputy director of the ACLU in Michigan. In an op-ed piece that she wrote in the Washington Post, she writes this, quote, As an American Muslim, I am consistently and aggressively asked by media figures, religious leaders, politicians, and Internet trolls to condemn terrorism to prove my patriotism. I emphatically refuse, end quote. Well, she goes on to say to that Muslims that do condemn Islamic extremism contribute to their own oppression. Here to respond is the founder and president of the Americ Islamic Forum for Democracy and author of the book, The Battle for the Soul of Islam, Dr. Zudi Jasser. Always great having you here on the show, uh, Mr. Thank Jasser. You, Welcome back. So what do you make of her, just sort of on a, on a meta, sort of broad level, when you read her piece, where did it sit with you? I couldn't help but say, you know, shame on her. The, after all this time, we still, as Muslim community, are talking about not even wanting to condemn. You know, on the surface, I would say, I've never condemned an act of terror, but we are in the, the reason I haven't is nobody doubts which side of the war we're on. Nobody doubts the fact that we take ownership as Muslims, that there's some deep, deep reforms that need to happen. And her entire piece was about deflection, denial, and basically dismissal of our responsibility as American Muslims. And I'll tell you, Clayton, I think history will show that Muslims like El Amir and so many other Islamists are no different than the Saudi theocracy, the Iranian theocracy, the Muslim Brotherhood, these movements of hundreds of millions of Muslims that were the core root cause that radicalized our community, and history will show that they are the reason that our religion is being destroyed by theocrats. So she can sit at home behind her keyboard and say she's not going to condemn. Yeah, condemnation is not enough. She needs to reform and help us reform or else she's part of the problem. Mm. Uh, she says she's not part of the problem. She says this. I'll read you further what she says. The terror imposed by those who sympathize with ISIS, Al-Qaeda, Boko Haram, Al-Shabaab and other groups is just as foreign to me as the terror advanced by mostly white men at an alarming rate of one mass killing every two weeks in this country. She also says that Muslims are the primary victims. So if that's true, which it is, what is she going to do about it? Stay home and, and wrap herself in the warmth of American liberty and do nothing? Or is she going to join our Muslim reform movement that takes ownership? And in our Muslim reform movement, we have a declaration we've asked Muslims to sign. Are they against the caliphate? Are they against violent jihad? Do they declare that theocracy is important to defeat? And will they declare the equality of men and women and try to reform the ideas that are the poor? in which these radicals swim. These radical groups that she claims to have nothing to do with are swimming in a pool of a Muslim community that grievance groups like hers are thriving on and actually radicalizing our community by making the West into the enemy rather than the West into the solution, which is freedom and reform against theocracy. So the El Amirs of the world are the main problem rather than the solution like our Muslim reform movement. What about the oppression piece? She says, look, by going out there and apologizing constantly, taking up my time throughout the day, I have to keep apologizing for these people, that that's oppressing me. <laughs> She's allowing herself to be oppressed by the main people who speak for our community, which are the Islamists of the Saudi regime, of the Iranian regime, of the Muslim Brotherhood grievance groups in America. So the oppression actually is coming from herself by letting these groups speak for us rather than saying we have to reform the ideas. She doesn't want to connect political Islam as part of the radicalization to the violent part. And, and due to that lack, that denial that she has, it's creating a huge obstacle to reform in 15 years now. Now, after 9-11, we're still spinning our wheels and not treating the root causes. And Americans, I think, are sick of the press release condemnations. They want to see Muslims take ownership for our theology, to say that we have to reform. Just like America fought against theocracy at our founding fathers, we Muslims need to fight against theocracy and stop this belly aching and whining and self-righteous indignation. Wow. Well said. Dr. Zudi Jasser, as always, great to see you. Happy New Year to you.